peroxins. Peroxins are the proteins which are coded by PEX genes. There are a variety of PEX genes. So if there is any defect in PEX genes, it can give rise to different disorders. And just to name name few, so it can give rise to Zellweger syndrome. It can give rise to X-linked adrenoleukodystrophy. It can give rise to infantile rapsum disease. Hey everyone, Dr. Mungli here. So today let's talk about peroxisomes. Now the peroxisomes, these are intracellular organelles present in our cells. Virtually all of our cells except um, red blood cells will have peroxisomes. What is the function of these peroxisomes? Peroxisomes are also referred as microbodies. Now what exactly these peroxisomes does? Now the peroxisomes, they are going to participate in variety of metabolic functions in our body. So I can classify the functions of peroxisomes into two categories. One is the catabolic function where it is involved in the degradation of some of our biomolecules and the other is the anabolic function. Now let's look into what, is the, what all the catabolic functions of peroxisomes. Now the peroxisomes catabolic function, first catabolic function that I would like to explain is very long chain fatty acid oxidation. So the oxidation of very long chain fatty acids like very long chain fatty acids are the fatty acids which contains uh, 22 carbon or more. So usually this, this kind of fatty acids you are going to find in the neuronal tissues. So very long chain fatty acids they cannot undergo beta oxidation in the mitochondrial matrix. So they need to be processed initially in the peroxisome so that processing of very long chain fatty acids into medium chain fatty acids or short chain fatty acids it will be going on in the peroxisomes and during this process there will be release of hydrogen peroxide and also acetyl-CoA. Now this acetyl-CoA it is going into the mitochondrial matrix and also uh, short chain fatty acids and medium chain fatty acids eventually they will be carried into the mitochondrial matrix for further beta oxidation process. So very long chain fatty acid oxidation is one of the function of peroxisome. So our second function of peroxisome is oxidation of branched chain fatty acid. Now example for branched chain fatty acid is phytanic acid. Now phytanic acid oxidation I have a video on that the link for that video it is there in the description below and also it is there at the end of this video. Now the phytanic acid ox uh, oxidation, it will be going on initially in the peroxisomes by alpha oxidation and after that beta oxidation will go on and until the phytanic acid is converted into medium chain fatty acid. So once the medium chain fatty acid carbon length occurs, it will be transported to mitochondrial matrix for further beta oxidation. And then some of the ceruloplasmin in the cell will be oxidized in the peroxisome. Ceruloplasmin is a copper containing protein. So that means peroxisomes uh, will handle some of the uh, uh, ceruloplasmin and release copper. So uh, ferritin oxidation or uh, fourth function of peroxisome is ferritin oxidation. Ferritin is an iron containing protein. So oxidation of ferritin will release uh, iron and some of the ferritin is oxidized in peroxisome. So most of it is oxidized in the lysosome, but some of it will be handled in the peroxisome. Now the purine catabolism. Purines are undergoing catabolism to give uric acid. So uric acid synthesis will be going on in peroxisome. And then D amino acid oxidation. Generally our amino acids are of L type, L amino acids, but uh, some of the D amino acids present in our body like D aspartate. So they are oxidized in the peroxisome by D-amino acid oxidases which are present in the peroxisome. And also polyamines. So polyamines are the uh, positively charged molecules. So this polyamine oxidation will also be going on in the peroxisomes. And our final function of peroxisome is reduction of hydrogen peroxide. Now variety of metabolic pathways that is uh, VLCFA oxidation and also oxidase like uh, formation of uh, means catabolism of purine into uric acid will produce hydrogen peroxide and this hydrogen peroxide is a reactive oxygen species because if you don't redu reduce hydrogen peroxide it can make hydroxyl radical which is a reactive oxygen species so it has to be reduced and the reduction of hydrogen peroxide will be going on in the peroxisome and this job it will be done by an enzyme called catalase that is why peroxisomes are the uh, organelles in our cells 
which contains highest quantity of or concentration of catalase enzyme. So, that is what is the function of peroxisome. So, peroxisomes in the catabolic list, we have eight functions, catabolic functions of peroxisome. Now, let's move on to anabolic functions of peroxisomes. Peroxisomes are involved in plasmalogen synthesis. Plasmalogens are complex uh, membrane lipids. Synthesis of plasmalogens will be going on in the peroxisome. And also synthesis of bile acids from cholesterol, bile acid reduction will be going on in the peroxisome. So these are the two anabolic functions of peroxisomes. Now, what if these peroxisomes are not functioning in our body? Or if the peroxisome biogenesis, what if it is defective? So it will give rise to a disorder called peroxisome biogenesis disorder. So the peroxisome biogenesis disorders are usually because of a defect in uh, genes which are coding for peroxisomal uh, proteins that is peroxins. Peroxins are the proteins which are coded by PEX genes. There are a variety of PEX genes which are coding peroxisins and peroxins are basically involved in biogenesis and assembly of peroxisomes in our body. So if there is any defect in PEX genes, it can give rise to different disorders and just to name, name few. So, it can give rise to Zellweger syndrome, it can give rise to X-linked adrenoleukodystrophy, it can give rise to infantile rapsum disease. So, in Zellweger syndrome, X-linked adrenoleukodystrophy and also in infantile rapsum disease, so catabolic functions of all peroxisomes are not going on and also anabolic functions are not going on. So, that means all these molecules will be accumulated and they will appear in the blood. That means in Zellweger syndrome patients, in adrenoleukodystrophy patients. So there will be accumulation of VLCFAs in the blood, BCFA that is phytonic acid being accumulated in the blood, ceruloplasmin, ferritin that means increase in copper, increase in iron accumulation. So all these molecules, so and also they can be built up of hydrogen peroxide giving rise to increased reactive oxygen species. So in uh, infantile Rapsum disease, there is a defect in alpha oxidation of uh, alpha oxidation of phytanic acid. So that can it can lead to accumulation of phytanic acid, and also it can lead to accumulation of other molecules because overall peroxisomes are not functioning properly. So this is all about uh, functions of peroxisomes and some of the disorders associated with the peroxisomes. I hope this video has helped you in understanding what is the role of peroxisomes in our cells. Make sure to click that subscription button down there so that you get a regular updates whenever I make videos like this. And also check out my playlist. Uh, you may find some of the useful videos uh, which you are looking for. So see you in my next video and till then you take care.